Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of being conscious of the words you speak. So often we say things like, I am not good at this, or I'm not able to accomplish that, not realizing the impact that our words have on what we manifest in a reality. The words and statements we put after I am has a powerful impact on our subconscious mind and ultimately becomes embedded in our belief system. Words have power and the more we say disempowering statements, the more we attract circumstances that we don't want by speaking them into existence. Just as thoughts become things, how we speak becomes our beliefs and ultimately our actions. The more we become conscious of how we speak and replace disempowering statements like I can't to I will or I am not ready to to I am ready for anything that comes my way, the more we begin to train our minds to work in our favor and attract positive outcomes. Make your mission today to speak about only things you want to happen and avoid negative talk about yourself or others. Remember, we can use words and how we speak to ourselves and others to disempower or empower ourselves. As the saying goes, words are containers for powers. You choose what kind of power they carry. Next up on the show, Judas and the Black Messiah by Warner Brothers. It's a huge yeah. deal. Let's talk a little bit about your character and who you play. Okay, so my character in Judas and the Black Messiah, I play uh, Jake Winters. Jake Winters is um, he's a 19 year old kid. He's very bright eyed right now. He's new into the Panthers, and so he's wanting to learn everything that he can. He's wanting to soak up information. He's always enthusiastic, whether he's outside passing out Black Panther newspaper in the freezing cold, or whether he's feeding the feeding the babies um, in the morning at six o'clock in the morning. He always has a smile on his face. Next up on the show, we have Algie Smith. Algie is a lead in the HBO series Euphoria and will be starring in the upcoming Warner Brother movie, Judas and the Black Messiah. Algie, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I appreciate y'all for having me. I'm really well. I'm feeling healthy. I'm in good spirits. It's good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. You definitely look healthy and vibrant. You know, you have a lot going on. But before we talk about your current projects, I want to take it back a little bit and how you got started. So I know you moved to Michigan to Atlanta at the age of eight. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. I know you started your acting journey pretty early. So talk to us about how you got into it. Yeah, it was um, so I moved to, from, to Atlanta from Michigan when I was around like seven or eight years old. And uh, it had nothing to do with acting or music or anything like that. It was just a family move. And then later on down the road, I started um, obviously gaining the love for music first before acting. And mm -hmm. then music led me into acting. I didn't start acting until I was maybe about 15. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, so that's how that got, that's how that period got started. Yeah. And, and when did you kind of develop this love for music? What kind of music did you like growing up? I loved all type of music, but I was really, I grew up in church, so I was really oh, like hearing, you know, all type of gospel music, but then I would listen to other music when I was over my grandma's house that I wasn't supposed to listen to. So I was like getting all of like, <laughs> influence from everywhere. And I was in the studio the first time when I was nine years old. My dad is a professional musician, a professional producer, music producer. So he put me in the studio for the first time when I was nine, and then I just fell in love from, with it from there. And just the art of expressing myself through music uh, made me comfortable with expressing myself through acting. And I saw that it was one and the same, kind of, um, as far as the digging down and reaching an expression that you have to express emotion. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the love of acting. Mm -hmm. And what was your first major role in film or TV? First major role was, was oh man, oh, it was a Nickelodeon, a show oh, called man. How to Rock on Nickelodeon. And it was... Uh, Symphonique Miller, who, which is Master P's daughter, and Master P was executive producing the show, and it was a great show. It was a great first thing to be a part of. I got to learn a lot and see how a set really worked. It was a weird episode, though. I had like spit in my mouth from the episode. That sounds really weird saying it right here, so you got to go watch it to get the context of what I'm saying because it sounds really weird. But it was a great uh, first start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how how was your experience kind of getting into the industry? Did you have a lot of challenges? Did I have a lot of challenges? I had the normal challenges that you would have. I feel like uh, I I feel like my gift. How can I say this? I, I didn't know how good I was. I would say that, and I was still rough around the edges, but I was pretty good for not being not doing it my whole life, and so I feel like that kind of made room for me. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I had the normal challenges, obviously, the no's before you get a lot of the yeses and just the constant no's, constant no's. But that just sharpens you as a creative and makes you go back to the table and the drawing board and figure out how to do it better. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, those are pretty much the regular challenges that you would have. Finances, you know, I didn't have the best of finances when I was starting out acting. So it's just that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I always like to ask that question about challenges because, you know, so many people just see people's success and they don't see, you know, the, you know, the, the hustle that goes behind it. So I always like to ask yeah. that, you know, so it's just our it's viewers know. Yeah, that's true. And even when you have success, there's still a hustle that still has to exactly. go behind it. Whatever you define as success, there still has to be a hustle or it just you can't depend on what you did last. You got to keep looking for the new, you know. Exactly. So yeah. let's talk about your role in Euphoria. Let's talk about a little yeah. bit about your character. OK, yeah. So in, in Euphoria, I love Euphoria. In Euphoria, I play Christopher McKay. He is a football player, uh, now a college football player, uh, freshman in college. And um, he is going through a little bit of depression because in high school he was the best on his team in college he's the worst on his team and he doesn't see a future in football anymore and on top of that uh, his girlfriend uh, Cassie who's played by um, who's played by Sydney Sweeney she's uh, she just found out that she's pregnant by McKay mm -hmm. so he has a lot of things that he's dealing with right now and he left us on the cliffhanger we don't know what they're gonna do with the situation yet so you gotta wait for next season to see how has your experience been on the show? Because this show has really resonated with people. You know, there's some diehard fans out there. So how have, you know, you've been on the ride with it. So how have you, you know, how has your experience been really seeing it becoming a huge success? It's been crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. It, could be, it, it took off so quick. It took off very quickly. And it's just a great show. It's a great, uh, it keeps you on edge the whole time. And the storyline is amazing. And so I, I'm not surprised that it took off. But even still, just it was a... It was very overwhelming at first because people loved it and they attached to it. So now, even still, every day I get messages about Euphoria through the DM. So people are waiting on it to come back, and I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And for those people that don't know, like, talk to us a little bit about the storyline of Euphoria. So, whew, there's a lot of storylines. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the main storyline is just you, you, we, we follow a group of teenagers who are navigating um, life and navigating through high school and drugs and sex and emotions and peer pressure and everything that comes with that at a heightened level um so we just see th different stories through that lens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amazing and, and do you have any similarities in your own personality and your character on the show uh for me i think the will to win the mm. will to want to win i feel like that's where i relate to mckay um he wants to make others around him proud i, I, I feel like the same way uh, so there's a, there's a couple of similarities there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about your music career. How have you been able to balance both acting and music? I don't I don't know how to. <laughs> it. it's, I feel like when you love something, you you find the time for it. So I uh, I truly love music and I truly love acting. So I I don't let either one um, fall to the wayside or get left behind. Yeah. And the team that I have around me is great, and they know how to maneuver and navigate that the same way. So. I don't think it's it's hard when you when you when you love something you figure out how to do it. Yeah, a hundred percent. You have to balance it all, right? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta balance it all. Yeah, I gotta get it all out. I gotta express myself. <laughs> and talk to us a little bit about your musical style and your current music projects. So my musical style, I would say I'm more in the lane of R and B. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a singer, but I also got some raps in me, so I can give you oh, some cool. with the melody. Yeah, come on, come on now. <laughs> so that's kind of my style in that lane. So right now, I'm working on. A, I won't. I won't call it a, any type of project. It's just a project. I'm working on a music project. So I'm at the drum board, creating a, a fresh sound for myself. It feels good. Mm -hmm. And what's one of one of the biggest milestones that you've had in your career so far? Oh, one of the biggest milestones. That's really <laughs> been one of those milestones that you're like, wow, like I can't believe I've done this. Um, honestly, I can't lie. The last film that I did, Judas and the Black Messiah, that, mm. that that's a milestone for me. Um, it's talk. It goes into the life of Fred Hampton, who was the leader of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party, and um, it shows his sacrifice, and it shows also the uh, how he got sold out by an FBI informant, William O'Neill, who he thought was um, who thought was with him and on his side. So it's a deep story and that was that was a great thing to be a part of 
for one, for my history as a black man, also number two, just because of everyone who was involved in it. You got Ryan Coogler, you got Shaka King, you have Daniel Kaluuya, you got Lakeith Stanfield, Daryl Gibson, Dominique Fishback, Dominique Thorne. The list goes on and on. I'm forgetting people right now, so they're going to be mad at me, but it's just a great project to be a part of. So I think that's a big milestone for me. Yeah, and you jumped into it. So this movie, um, Judas and the Black Messiah by Warner Brothers, it's a huge yeah. deal. Let's talk a little bit about your character and who you play. Okay, so my character in Judas and the Black Messiah, I play uh, Jake Winters. Jake Winters is um, he's a 19-year-old kid. He's very bright-eyed right now. He's new into the Panthers, and so he's wanting to learn everything that he can. He's wanting to soak up information. He's always enthusiastic, whether he's outside passing out Black Panther newspaper in the freezing cold or whether he's feeding the, feeding the babies um, in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. He always has a smile on his face. But then we see his character. We see his um, his his character kind of turn and change a little bit, a lot actually, drastically towards the end because he goes through a, an arc which he realizes he realizes the intensity of the brutality that's around him, and he sees it firsthand now. And so it kind of makes him angry. And so I won't give you too much of the story, but he's um he's a heartbeat, you know. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. And what can people take away and expect from this film? I think people can take away and expect truth and uh, knowledge with no punches being held. I think um, a lot of emotion, a lot of anger will be brought up from this film just because you see the truth. And the truth is very is very heartening. Um, and so I think people can just, that's, that's all I'll leave it at, just the truth and the honesty about the assassination and the betrayal of Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. And why do you think a movie like this is so important, especially with today's political climate? <laughs> um, I would go on and say why it isn't important, honestly. Why, I would ask the question why it's not, because we still see the same things that this movie highlights going on today with Breonna Taylor. She was killed in her house the same way Fred Hampton was assassinated in his house while he was asleep. Mm -hmm. So we still have the same issues going on. So I would, I would even ask the question of why it's not important. Yeah. I completely agree. And you know, our show is all about inspiration and inspiring the new generation. Uh, Cause yeah. we have a lot of entrepreneurs and people that, you know, look up to all of the guests I have. So I want to ask you three traits that you think that has made you successful in this industry. And yeah. <laughs> good question. Good question. Three traits that has made me successful in the industry. Um, I would say hard work. Mm -hmm. Great personality, always having a smile and being kind to people and nice to people. Um, and respecting everyone, no matter who it is. Mm -hmm. And how have you stayed motivated through the challenges? Because I think, a lot, especially in the entertainment industry, just in general, you know, you face, as we talked about earlier, you face so many challenges. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. lots of no's, lots of auditions. So how do you kind of keep motivated through that all? I think the key, well, for me, myself, is I'll, I'll take it back to just when you love something, you won't give up on it. And so mm -hmm. I think no matter what type of, you, you have to understand it's going to be a journey no matter what you take on, no matter what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And if you really, really, you have to really, really love it because there's going to be ups and downs like a valley. It's like going valleys and mountains, going to be ups and downs. And if you really love it, you stick it out. So I think the, I would say the end goal is what keeps me motivated but but i think just the everyday love for it keeps me motivated yeah uh, i think that's great advice and that's so true when you like something or love something and you have a passion yeah. for it you won't take no for an answer you just keep going until you succeed so <laughs> if you just like it you're gonna give up on it you're gonna be like oh that was cool but I, yeah. it's too hard I've, i was just going to something else but if you really love it you're gonna figure it out yeah you have to have a crazy passion for it <laughs> exactly. that's it but thank mm -hmm. you so much, LG, for being on the show. It's been such an honor, and congratulations on all your success. You've really made some really big and amazing moves. So thank you so much for <laughs> taking the time to be on the show, and congratulations on everything. Thank you. I appreciate you. It went by so quick. We got to do it again. We got to do yes, it again. Definitely. Yeah. Come back right. anytime, yeah. anytime you want. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.